The chubby man was in a state of complete confusion, unable to comprehend the situation. He thought to himself that he had meticulously chosen Ruashua. So why did the nobleman just select the humble Chao Yong? Subsequently, he attempted to convince Su Emo by asking him if he wanted another child. Upon hearing what he said, Su Emo stopped walking and asked him, What do you want? The overweight man mentioned to him that there are numerous children here, and among them, there is Ruashua with exceptional abilities. Ruashua, who stood there like a statue, has still not recovered from her shock. With an angry expression, Su Emo confronted him, saying, Are you trying to command me on what to do? The chubby man was terrified and expressed his remorse, stating, I don't dare. When she finally overcame her shock, Ruashua rushed to Su Emo, grabbed onto his clothes, and said, Please, take me along with you. The fat man erupted in anger, shouting, What are you doing, you foolish girl? Witnessing this, Chao Yan was afraid that the nobleman might reconsider and choose Ruashua. So she held onto his clothes firmly. The plump man said to her, You're being too presumptuous. Mr. Ho is beyond your grasp. He then clutched her clothes and began to pull her away. But Su Emo told him to stop. With that, Ruashua breathed a sigh of relief as she had captured Master Ho's attention. Su Emo moved near her and took hold of her hand. Ruashua was overjoyed, believing that Mr. Ho would take her with him. Yet, no one could have anticipated the turn of events. Su Emo threw Ruashua onto the ground, his eyes piercingly cold. Ruashua was taken aback because she had been unaware that Su Emo, just like her, possess memories from his previous life. Su Emo looked toward Ruashua and said in his thought, You and I have been together for hundreds of years, but after all, you cannot fetch water with a basket. While making his way to the door, he said he'd pick just Chao Yang. At that moment, Ruashua was perplexed, unable to fathom why this was occurring. Before his departure, the plump man, with a menacing look in his eyes, said to Su Emo, wait, if you intend to take Chao Yang alone, it'll cost you 2,000 low-grade spiritual stones or 200 medium-grade ones. Su Emo smiled at him and said, Spiritual stones? You dare to ask me for spiritual stones? The fat man was surprised and said, What do you mean by that, Mr. Ho? Su Emo responded by asking, What will you do if I don't pay? The fat man warned him that he wouldn't leave here alive. Suddenly, two assassins appeared behind Su Emo, brandishing their blades at him. Su Emo remained remarkably composed under this dire situation and said to the fat man, I'd like to see what you can do to me. Unexpectedly, a henchman of Su Emo appeared behind the two assassins and swiftly eliminated them with a single strike. The obese man was so taken aback and terrified that he called for more assassins to attack Su Emo and his comrade, warning them, if we don't take them out, we'll all be killed. Afterward, he fled from the battlefield. Subsequently, Su Emo instructed his subordinate, Mr. Wang, saying, I'll leave the assassins to you. Upon receiving Su Mo's command, Mr. Wang promptly leaped behind the assassins and swiftly eliminated them all within seconds. In that instant, the overweight man, who had been apprehended by Su Emo, began pleading for his life. He offered spiritual stones, treasures, and anything else Su Emo desired in exchange for his own life. Nonetheless, the chubby man was so enraged that he resolved to use Chao Yang as a hostage. He rushed toward her with all his might. But when he was on the verge of reaching her, his hand was sliced off. The fat man couldn't grasp the situation and stared in shock at his severed arm. It turned out that Su Emo was the one who had cut off the man's hand, evident from the trace of blood on Su Mo's hand. He then reassured Chao Yang, saying, No one has the authority to take your life except me. Chao Yang was filled with happiness that Su Emo had rescued her. Out of nowhere, a massive sword suddenly appeared. Su Emo then addressed Chao Yang, commanding, Take his life with your own hands. He has mistreated you greatly. Upon hearing Su Mo's words, Chao Yang recollected her past, 
where the overweight man consistently insulted her, saying, You're just trash. Did I take you in so you could eat so excessively? What a waste, eating more than others. She would always burst into tears when she heard his words. He also brutally beat her while taunting, You're nothing but a loser. How dare you not kneel before me? Do you truly think you're some sort of princess? After recalling the past events, Chao Yang was a bit unsure about ending his life. But Su Imo approached her and said, He conspired with wealthy businessmen to abduct children, and he used to bully you in the same way. The decision is now in your hands. Hearing this, Chao Yang felt anger welling up within her, and without any hesitation, she tightly gripped the sword with both of her hands. Witnessing Chao Yang's intent to kill him, the overweight man was seized by fear and implored her not to end his life. He also claimed, I was the one who saved you. Without me, you would have perished long ago. When Chao Yang heard his words, her anger flared. However, the fat man added, I shouldn't have saved you in the first place and left you to rot. If you dare to kill me, I will ensure you never escape. After he finished speaking, Chao Yang severed his leg. The fat man begged her to cease the torture and simply put an end to his life. However, Chao Yang ignored his request and continued slicing his body. The overweight man screamed in agony and begged her to stop. Afterward, Su Emo approached her from behind and remarked, Well done, he's dead. With a gesture of her hand, Chao Yang showed her respect to Su Emo and said, I wholeheartedly obey the young master's commands. Su Emo held her hand and declared, From this day forward, anyone who attempts to harass you will face their demise. Chao Yang was elated upon hearing this. Following this, Mr. Wang asked Su Emo, What should be done with the other orphans? To which Su Emo replied, Send someone to offer them a sum of money and then allow them to find their own means of survival. Lu Ruashua, who had been abandoned, started yelling for them to wait, but it was futile. As a result, she resolved to leave that place and find a way to enhance her cultivation first. Inside the carriage, Su Emo asked Chao Yang if she was hungry. Chao Yang replied that she wasn't hungry. However, as her stomach began to growl, she admitted with embarrassment I'm a little bit hungry. Out of nowhere, an assortment of food emerged from Su Mo's ring. He then instructed her to begin eating. When Chao Yang saw the food, she couldn't restrain herself and started eating rapidly. While she was eating, Su Mo said, I mentioned this back at the orphanage. If you wish to follow me, you must permit me to restrain your body. Once the restraint is imposed, you won't be able to defy my commands let alone harm me. Otherwise, your soul will vanish into oblivion. He also added, yet, I can offer you a choice. Walk away now, and we can put the past behind us. With a determined look, Chao Yang stated, Young master, what do you think I mean to you? I made a decision right then and there, and I won't go back on my word. Following that, Su Mo placed his hand on Chao Yang and instructed her to remain calm and not resist. Once he had completed embedding the restraint within her, Su Emo ordered her to punch him. Chao Yang was taken aback by his request. Nevertheless, when she delivered the punch, she experienced intense pain in her body. Su Emo explained that this was the result of the prohibition, and he added, If you attempt to harm me in the future, the consequences will be far more severe. To this, Chao Yang replied firmly, I will never betray the young master. Upon arrival at the mansion, Mr. Wang notified him. Su Emo then instructed Mr. Wang to arrange a room for Chao Yang and have someone accompany her for a bath. He added that he had some matters to attend to and would return later. Subsequently, Mr. Wang assisted Chao Yang in alighting from the carriage and requested her to follow him. Upon reaching their destination, Mr. Wang informed Chao Yang that this would be her room from now on. Chao Yang was impressed by the spaciousness of the room and contemplated to herself, is it fitting for me to reside in such a fine place? Nevertheless, Chao Yang wasn't ready to occupy such a luxurious room, 
so she fled outside. A maid inquired if anything was wrong, and Chao Yang replied, I'd prefer to live in the horse shed. Mr. Wang reminded her that she had been personally chosen by the young master and questioned, How can you live in a horse shed? Before departing, he added, A maid will come to change your clothes and help you bathe later, and I'll inform the chef to prepare your meal. Chao Yang was filled with joy and wondered how she could ever repay the kindness of her young master. As Su Imo walked alone on the road, he muttered to himself, if we consider the timing, that things shouldn't have been taken away. Subsequently, a young boy stood before the shop owner and said, Boss, the jade pendant is damaged and quite small. It's worth no more than 20 spirit stones. But the owner responded, 20 spirit stones? No, no, I can't even recover the cost price. I would need at least 50 stones. The young boy offered him 30 spirit stones but the owner declined. Suddenly, someone else offered a hundred spiritual stones. This took the owner by surprise. The person was none other than Su Imo, who placed a large spiritual stone in front of the owner and said, Do you think the price is too low? The owner, who recognized Su Imo, attempted to raise the price, saying, This jade pendant is a family heirloom. Upon hearing this, Su Imo responded, Weren't you initially planning to sell it for 50 spirit stones? Hearing this, the owner relented and said, Since Lord Marquis desires it so greatly, then I'll sell it for 100 spirit stones. Upon hearing this, the young boy became furious and started arguing with the owner, stating, I was the first to spot the jade pendant you can't. However, before he could complete his sentence, Su Imo took the jade pendant in front of him and muttered to himself, it seems I'm still ahead of you. The young lad, named Lin Yi, was the previous protagonist in the novel. He had been an orphan, drifting from place to place, yet he possessed an exceptional spirit-seeking physique. After accidentally discovering an ancient jade pendant, he embarked on the journey of cultivation and changed his life. Su Imo, who had known all along who he was, snatched away his chance to become the hero and said, I hope our paths won't cross again in the future. Lin Yi muttered to himself, Who is that person? The aura within the jade pendant is like nothing I've ever seen. It's certainly a treasure. His face contorted with anger as he continued, One day, I'll make you regret what you did today. Suddenly, a pillar of light materialized before his eyes. Lin Yi exclaimed in shock, Is a spiritual being being born? No, it doesn't seem like it. He began to run in that direction, pondering aloud, could it be that, in addition to the jade pendant, there's an even greater opportunity?